Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. On our show today, I am thrilled to share internationally renowned psychic medium, spiritual teacher, author, and radio host, John Holland. I first became aware of John when he spoke at an event I attended at the Omega Center in New York many years ago when I was on my secret search to find evidence of the afterlife. He's a great medium, and I remember thinking that he's so caring, and he's so dedicated to healing broken hearts. He's got integrity in teaching the truth that we do survive physical death, and we can connect with our loved ones. John is the author of many best-selling books, Power of the Soul, Psychic Navigator, Born Knowing, The Spirit Whisperer, Chronicles of a Medium, 101 Ways to Jumpstart Your Intuition, and his latest, Bridging Two Realms, Learn to Communicate with Your Loved Ones on the Other Side. He's also created Oracle Cards, and I'm thrilled that you can download them on your smartphone, and has numerous online workshops based on his signature workshop series. He has starred in several TV specials, including A&E's Mediums, We See Dead People. He's also starred in his own pilot, Psychic History, for the History Channel. For over nine years, John has hosted his own internet radio show on Hay House Radio called Spirit Connections. There's so much great information on his website, which is johnholland.com, and you can meet John at one of his upcoming workshops, including the Soul Summit Scottsdale, which is September 12th through 15th, 2019, and you can visit soulsummitscottsdale.org to find out more. John Holland, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thanks, Sandra, so much for having me. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I just, you've been on my bucket list to interview, never knowing how and when it would happen. And here we are today. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. John, how does your story start? Can you take us back to when you, you know, in the past, when you even started getting involved in mediumship? And is it something you've always been aware of? Or um, yeah, just tell us your story, if you wouldn't mind. Um, well, I'll try. It's a it's a long story, but I'll briefly tell you okay. as best as I can. Okay. It's um, it all started. It, I was very I was like this as a child actually, and most mediums um, they've had signs of uh, of a spiritual some type of a spiritual connection uh, when they were younger. Um, and myself, I was very fascinated even as a little boy, like five six years old, in, in psychic matters, spirits, ghosts, magic, religion. Um, I had a thing for uh, an affinity for the saints, um, any theology books. So this is, you know, pretty interesting for a five or six year old. And my dad would try to get me um, to go outside and play, you know, baseball with my brothers. I'm one of five from New England, yes. um, Irish, Italian, Catholic. And I was always the different one. And I was very sensitive as a child. And now the, the key word right now, Sandra, as you know, is empath or right. empathic. I guess I really was. I was just very, very sensitive. And I knew things that I couldn't, a kid couldn't possibly have known or heard. Um, I knew when someone was going to visit the house unexpectedly. I knew uh, what other people were going to say. Um, I used to dream of, um, I thought I was dreaming of people walking in my room, like spirit people, but I was actually awake. Um, and a lot of people, Sandra, they said, well, weren't you frightened by this? I, I can't be frightened or I couldn't be frightened of something that was always there. You know what I mean? It wasn't like the yeah. movies. Too many people think of like the movies. And then uh, I studied psychic uh, abilities as a kid. I was fascinated by it. You know, Love I Dream of Jeannie, Bewitched, uh, the si- soap opera Dark Shadows. <laughs> and uh, I was always fascinated and started studying psychic abilities even as a kid. And then, but just like in society, really quickly, um, Susan, it's, you know, people, um, when you're a little different in society, you laughed at, called names. So that's, you know, so I, I pushed the ability down or didn't talk about it um, for years. And many years later, I was in an automobile accident in uh, Los Angeles, and the abilities that I had or uh, pushed away came back um, so strong. I walked away from this accident where the car was totally crushed, and I was actually thankful for that accident, believe it or not. And I believe that um, some tra- a lot of trauma happens in our life, what you do about it is the free will part, and it changed my life when I was living in California. And once that accident happened, that's when all these abilities opened up. Um, I got my life together in L.A. I was a young man, um, and 
it was so the the abilities were so strong that um, I I had to learn what is happening to me. And I didn't just start doing readings. I, I wanted to know how is this happening? What are the mechanics of psychic ability? And so I, I went into even more study. People, and then people asked me to do readings. I said no. Um, finally, I started to. And then two years into doing readings, people on the other side started showing up. Uh, and I said, okay, well, here I am dealing with being a psychic and all, all the stuff that goes with that. Now what? Dead people are showing up mm-hmm. for me. So I didn't understand what was happening. It was different. And I started reading, reading, reading on mediumship. And I read about the Fox sisters and spiritualism. And all the books that I read were from England because spiritualism started here but took off over in England even right. more so. And one thing led to another. Two weeks into reading these books on mediums, and I said to myself, if I could only go over there and study with these spiritualists. Um, little did I know that you, it was here in the States. I said, if I could go to England and study, how great that would be. Two weeks into reading those books, I stepped on a person's foot at a party who were from, uh, that was from England. And that's how it all started. Synchronicity led me to England to study there, to find out how to do uh, the proper way to do mediumship, understand my own soul. Very, very intense training over in England for a few years. And then came back here, and, and that's how it all started, really. But synchronicity... Um, I believe you're meant to do this work as a medium. I believe we all have the potential to okay. do this, but to be a medium as a life of service, um, I think spirit and synchronicity led me one door opened after another, and then the books happened and everything else. So unexpected, didn't ask for this, didn't, didn't know what would happen, just followed I, what I feel I was supposed to, what I was supposed to do in this lifetime, really. Oh, what was the first book that you wrote? Born Knowing, and it talks about how my childhood, talks about my family, a lot of personal stuff in there, and how it all started from my very first experience um, right up into uh, Los, going to Los Angeles, California. Pretty great, and I know what you mean about the synchronicities. It's, it's like, personally with me, I feel like I'm only given the next step, and I'd probably be overwhelmed with the big picture, but the amount of synchronicities and things that happen, and whether you're to be a medium or not, pay attention because I think each one of us has some potential. <laughs> being Oh, absolutely. I believe we're all born with the potential to do psychic or mediumship work, um, but to, to live a life of it is a, is a totally different story. You know, and I believe uh, I had a high potential, obviously, when I was a kid. So I was born this way. Someone may have a lower potential for this. It's just mm-hmm. they just need to work harder at it. If they really feel the calling for it, um, Susan. And you know, I'll t- I tell all my students, why, are you ta- why do you want to be a medium? The number one answer should be to help people, to, uh, to help people, um, and not to be famous or because you saw someone else do it or to be, you know, to be on stage. It has, it's, an, it's a calling, actually. You know what I mean. I, I do. I am not a practicing medium, but I've certainly taken enough courses to know that it's inside me. And when, if it's meant to bloom into something, it will. Um, but to even being in a workshop with someone and to be able to give evidence of their loved one and see the reaction, it heals hearts. This is, this is important. I mean, we have all experienced grief, especially listeners of this show. And I, John, don't think anything is more painful than the the grief of a broken heart and to be able to shed a little bit of comfort that your loved one is very much alive. And yes, we can't hug them. We can't talk to them right now, but they are around. um, And and to see that, and I've also seen the flip side of it. I've seen plenty of people that are out charging an enormous amount of money being kind of crappy mediums. And it's all about the, the, the show, the, ego and all that. And that is not the reason to get into mediumship. You're right. No, it's, it's myself and a few other mediums who have stuck do, who have uh, a few ministers that have been, um, uh, they've been certified by the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain. I think it's, um, we're, we're striving, striving to bring the quality of mediumship, evidential mediumship back to the way it, it should be. Mm-hmm. And you know why I say that, Susan, for, and everyone who's listening? Sandra. Because, Sandra, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. Because, you know, I'm thinking of, because I'm thinking of Susan from the, uh, the Soul Summit. I'm yeah, sorry, Yeah, well, you talked to the, hundreds of people. I'm, I'm not hurt. Don't worry about it. No, it's okay, because we're, we're you know, we're going to be talking about Suzanne and, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, the uh, Arizona. Um, is, say, somebody takes a, a, a course 
um, now remember, mine was a study of a few years, sitting with mediums every mm-hmm. once a week for two years in circle, seeing them work on stage, going to the after Finley College, the College of Psychic Studies. I wanted to do it right. I wanted right. to learn the mechanics of this. Some people get into it too fast, and if an, if an inexperienced medium is up there, uh, one-on-one or on a platform or on the stage, and there's a mother in the, a mother in the audience who lost a child, the hardest of losses, and the, the medium's not that great. Um, that or, or not on that mother in that audience may think I mean this is her first time seeing someone and if that's what she's seen she may say well if this is what it is I'm never coming back to this right. or this kind of you know the, or looking for answers this way so one medium can represent all of us you know so that's why you got to be careful be prepared if you're going to do this work make sure you understand how it works and uh, practice this mm-hmm. and have the love for the spirit world be there first there's a I'm really grateful that you're Talk, you're speaking this language and have this passion because there's some um, uh, Philip Dykes and Carrie McLeod in the UK that are th- that same passion and they're excellent, excellent mediums. But one of their concerns is this is becoming entertainment more so than, you, you know, gr- helping broken hearts, he'll, he'll break yes. broken hearts. And while a platform demonstration certainly can have entertainment value you know and build energy and laughter because they are still alive you know we don't die um but the the goal really does have to be first and foremost for being the messenger from those in the spirit world so i will because that's who you're really working for sandra is is it's it's you're working for the, the people on the other side and mediumship is just more than delivering messages. Also, it's another thing I say, it's also helping to heal the living, right? It's about healing the living. And I understand the entertainment value. I can be quite funny on stage. Um, I use humor. I know it's not funny losing someone, but when you have a hundred to a thousand people in the audience, you have to raise that energy of the room right. because it's a three way connection. It's those on the other side, myself and the audience. And when all three are in sync and the energy is high, uh, then it's like a, a perfect shaken cocktail. It, it comes out. It comes out perfect. I need that audience. I need that energy up. And and there's nothing wrong with laughing. Not a so. mother says to me not too long ago, "This is the first time I, I've, I've laughed and or smiled in four months since I lost my child." And some people feel guilty laughing. It's okay. We're the ones that are still here. We're the they and they want us to be happy until we see them again too. So it's a, it's a big job for a medium to, to hold the attention of a thousand people, you know, so I can't yeah, imagine. But, but I love it. Oh mm. yeah, you've got to. And someday we're going to be there on the other side and go, oh, I get it. Okay. I get how this works. All right. right. You know, so we'll be on, on the other side. Um, I, just before we spoke a couple hours before I was diving through your website and everything, and I actually found your online course on mediumship. And I bought it, you know, I just thought, you know, I've taken enough courses. The price was extremely reasonable It's through Hay House. You yes. offer a 60 day money back guarantee. Who does that? Right. That's integrity right. speaking. And it just showed me your passion really for training people, teaching. And for myself, you know, like I said, I've got this, I don't want to say a dormant ability. It's just, I think I've been too afraid to practice. Um, but it's just, you know, I'm excited to, just to get get started on again and just see where it goes. So, well, uh, yeah, I know which one you're talking about the Mm -hmm. spirit communication, um, uh, course that is basically too. Um, it's a lot of information in there for you. Um, because just like my book, bridging two realms, which came out last year, I wrote it for the bereaved, but I also wrote it for people who want to study this to show you what it takes to have a solid, let me say that again, a solid foundation of how this works. So, uh, that course is great. Uh, it, there's a lot of information, and just like the uh, the book, Bridging Two Realms, uh, Learn to Communicate with the Loved Ones on the Other Side, is to show people that. But it basically, that book came to me because Hay House asked me, "Do you have another book in you?" And I and I I already wrote like five. I already wrote like six, and then you know a lot of other stuff with it. But um, I said, "Well, how many times can I? How, how many different ways can you say?" The dead don't die. I mean, that we're not dead. So I thought about it, and I used what was in society. What am I hearing lately? I'm hearing empath, soul. People are connecting to the other side who have no training, and they don't understand why it's happening. Is the consciousness of man changing, or is the veil on the other side getting thinner? Right. I think it's a little bit of both. So mm-hmm. it's for the bereaved, and it's also for people who are curious 
um, who want to take this to another level or just to uh, um, just for more information. So, but thank you. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited. Just, I mean, like I said to you before we started recording this, I'm a listener. I'm actively a, well, obviously a human being. I want to have the best life possible. I do think we all have this box of tools that we don't know we can use and tap into. I may not be meant to be a medium, but so what? If I can get in touch with my own intuition and my own abilities. And I love the title of your book, Bridging Two Realms, Learn to Communicate with Your Loved Ones on the Other Side. Like, I want to have the best life possible, feel comfortable that they're still around and and all that. So can you give us a, maybe some tips or talk a little bit about Bridging Two Realms a little bit? If they're, you know, not everybody uh, may read your book, but just is there any tools that we could use now just to feel comfortable that our loved ones are there or um, something we can do to communicate with them. Right. Be aware. I also talk about, uh, there was a book, uh, Hello from Heaven by Bill and Judy Guggenheim. Uh, they wrote, uh, they did, in, they interviewed thousands and thousands of people, of people that have had experience from the other side without a medium. So that's key in there. It's calling cards from heaven is what I call it. It's, that's the dreams you have of your loved one, the, the shiny pennies you find. The dragonfly, as you're thinking, your mom, that lands on you. Uh, the smells or, of flowers or perfume filling your house. These are after-death communications without the help of a meeting, having your own personal experience. So I list those also. But basically, it was I wanted people who were bereaved um, to show them that, look, your loved one is not gone. But when people are bereaved so much, Sandra, they, um, when somebody passes away, we're so bereaved that your loved one could be standing right beside you, uh, you know, in spirit or spiritual form, and you, f- you feel them. And many people after, when somebody loses someone, r- a few days or right away, they start saying, I feel like he's still here, because they are. But bes- because we're so emotional because of the loss or the bereavement, we don't feel them. Your loved ones, all they want to let you know is, we're he- I'm, I'm here, I'm right here, I'm, I'm with you. So in the book, the first part of the book, I talk about all the, where is the other side? A lot of people are like, what are my loved ones doing? Can they see me here? Um, do, do, they, uh, do they have schools over there? So I talk about the spirit world, the levels of the spirit world, to give people a basic knowledge of this is what the spirit world is. That's our real home. That's where we really came from. And, you know, this world, the earth here, it's, it's temporary. Um, so I, I give people an understanding of where their loved one is, not just floating in some ethereal space. And I, t- I start teaching them the connections of we're in a society right now, Sandra, everything, it, there's so much noise, so much uh, social media, so much internet. There's just a lot of noise on the outside world. So many times you can't even hear your intuition trying to give you a little clue because of all the noise because uh, all this outside stuff where we're forced to go on the outside it's getting quiet really quiet you have to make i was taught as as a student you have to make um you have to make your you have to make space in your own consciousness or your own mind for the spirit people meaning you got to get all of today out of the way all the technology for the moment that you want to connect with them and a simple technique is you get a picture of a loved one. Too many people, and, someone, and people who are listening understand this, yourself and myself, who's in my mom, we remember too much how the person looked just before they passed. And that's the image that's stuck in our head, right. maybe for the rest of our lives. When I've always linked with people on the other side. They said, please tell them not to think of me this way, because sometimes it's not always uh, uh, an attractive thing before somebody passes away because of illness or an accident. So get out a happy picture of your loved one, the most happiest picture you can find with them smiling. And they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. Get the picture with the smiling eyes. Put it in front of you. Get a, go into a quiet room or a space in your house if you don't have a room for uh, a dedicated room. Light a small candle or a voltive candle and just get quiet. Just get real quiet. Look at that picture and breathe like a form of a meditation. And ask your loved one. Ask them to step forward. Now, stay away from what you see in the movies. They're not going to come through a Star Wars 3D rift and pop into your, into your, into your house. It's, uh, in, you know, nor are you going to see, like, glitter come down or something. It's, it's, they have an aura, you have an aura. You may feel somebody standing right beside you. You may feel a warmth on your shoulder. You may feel a breeze. Don't explain it away. You may feel a warmth on your shoulder, and you're going to turn around and say, oh, it must be the heat. 
they're going to show you anywhere that they can to get your attention and just invite them in your child, mom, 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 step in, step in, meaning step into their space. And that's how we teach students step in, step into my shoes, step closer. Let me feel you and let your loved one know because they do take the cues from you. They really, really do. If they know showing you a sign or stepping close to you or you have them feeling you or you're seeing things or hearing things, um, and you freak out or you get really emotional because of the contact, they'll wait or to go to somebody else. So let them know that you're ready, that you welcome any signs from them. And be open. Not, it could be an after-death communication sign or it could be a physical sign that you're feeling them. And people say, Sandra, how do I know it's them? You'll know. You'll know in your heart if you say to yourself, is this coming to me or is this coming from me? You know when it's your own mind sometimes or what's your imagination. And imagination will just come in and go away. But your intuition, your soul, spirit communication keeps coming back. And you are contr- – this is a big thing too, Sandra. A lot of people who are experimenting with mediumship, they're very sensitive. They can't shut it off. They're walking around. They say, I see the people, I see, uh, people on the other side all day. That's an untrained medium. Um, you try to learn. Oh, you have to learn the master of your abilities. I don't really like to say gifts too much because gifts sounds like I have it and you don't. Master the ability of how the psychic mechanisms of yourself work so you are the master of your abilities. It is not the master of you. Yeah. I like it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we, yeah. we're all familiar with gut instincts, right? So that is, a, sure. that's a psychic ability. So it's like, duh, we have them. You can feel when you walk into a room, somebody's got good vibes, somebody you want to stay away from. So we have, we do have this, like you say, you know, if you want to go train to be a medium and some people that is, you know, there's maybe a soul's plan or something, but we all, right. all of us can, can start this kind of stuff immediately. And, I don't, maybe you can shed a little light on this, but when we die or transition or whatever, step into the other side, I don't think we are giving, given all knowing of the whole universe so that they know how to do all this stuff. Oh God. Yes. Yes. You know, God, you're a good woman. God, you've done your work. (laughs) Thanks. Um, Because a lot of people, they come to me. I had one woman come to me and she said, can my father help me with my finances? And I say this story all the time. And I said, well, how was he here with money? And she said, he, he, um, he, he, she said he sucked with money uh, or he was awful with money. And I said, well, he still is. I said, just because somebody passes away doesn't make him a, a bookkeeper or an accountant or a financial advisor. Um, now, maybe, maybe, Sandra, if her dad was a banker or a financial planner and then he passes, he, he still has that knowledge. I had two sisters come to see me too, and uh, the, the mother came through, and that was fine. And I, at the end of the reading, I heard one of the sisters sigh. She, she went, you know, she just sighed. And I said, Is, were you not happy? She said, no, John, the reading was great. I, you know, I, I know it was my mom. She said, but my mom, the one thing I wanted to hear was my mom tell me, should I divorce my husband? And I said, oh, darling, look. I said, those on the other side, they cannot interfere with the karmic lessons that we're supposed to learn here. They can't, all right? So um, she can't say, yeah, divorce him. It's not her job. That's a, a, the that's a thing you have to deal with, that they're there to support you, that they're there to help you, but they don't become all-knowing in every single subject. Maybe some, they want to, sometimes they want to come to, uh, some people come to see me, they want their loved one to give them spiritual advice. Well, do they do spiritual service here? Uh, just see what I mean. I hear you chuckling. I do. You know, and I, can I really believe it's true, though. I really believe that when you go to the other side, um, you may have a higher view of things. Mm-hmm. And I and I liken it to this: if you're in space or above the earth, you can see where a river starts, right? You see right. from what ocean it turns into a river, and you can see where it, the river is going. Uh, just a higher view, but you can't influence it. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So I think that they can help you, guide you, put you at the right place at the right time, play with synchronicity to show you that they're there, but they're not all-knowing beings, meaning your loved ones. Then you've got the guides and the angels, which is a whole other level, you know, the celestial plane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do like that. Um, I'm excited about reading your, your book, your latest one. That's cool. Thank you. I am. Uh, but as far as the afterlife, do you... Um, 
maybe a dumb question, but are our loved ones just floating around us? Are they up to things? Are they continuing their life? Are they continuing learning? Uh, yes. And it's weird. We try to explain, um, one of my good colleagues, and she became a friend of mine who used to tour with Wayne Dyer, Anita Morjani. Love her. And yes, the most kindest woman in the world too, also, and a good friend. And she's, uh, she's doing, she's, she's lecturing all over the world. Um, in her, uh, in her book, also dying to be me. Woman passes away. She she was on death's door. Goes to the other side. She had stage four cancer tumors the size of um, uh, tennis balls, and she meets her dad. And she had the whole experience over there on the other side. And he says, "If you come back, uh, you have a job here." And but she, you know what was fascinating? Hmm. She said to me that um, when she was on the other side, she could see her family in the operating room all looking down at her. She didn't know how to connect to the other side, I mean, to, to us. And see, so first of all, I, I will answer your question, but those on the other side, they also have to learn how to do this again, communicate with physical beings, with the power of thought. Yeah, so, she, you know, and then when she came back, uh, well, and this goes to your question, what are they doing on the other side? Now, we try to explain it in physical forms, do they, because they'll come through saying, they, they'll, they'll tell me on the other side or show me, look, they have their body back, is there really a body or are they really show me that? Isn't it a spiritual body? So, so I, I'm still don't know. And I don't even claim to know all the answers. I can only go by what I've heard from near death experiences, mm -hmm. um, like Anita and Raymond Moody's work, who I love. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, near death experiences in the book. Also, I write about, but I've been, I've been told on the other side that there's schools, there's meadows, there's, uh, um, there's different places of existence for now, here's something that it shows you. Oh, I did a reading for a mom once when I was living in uh, Massachusetts. Now I'm up in New Hampshire. And as she was sitting with me, I think it was in a group sitting, I said, I just saw a wheelchair push across the room. I said, why is your son, I already connected to the son, I said, your son is telling me he's not in the wheelchair anymore and he's running the bases, B-A-S-E-S. -E and I said, do you understand that? And she started to cry. And I said, What's, what, what, what does that mean? Because I don't know sometimes. And she says, John, when he was born, he had spina bifida. And he passed suddenly because of a, a situation that happened. He hurt his neck and he passed as a, as a young boy. So he couldn't walk his whole life because of the spina bifida. Up in his room, uh, he would sit in his wheelchair and look out the window. And the baseball field was across the street where he could see all the boys playing. So, and he always longed to be with those boys, but he knew he never would. So here he is, he passes away, tells me, tell him my mom, I don't need the wheelchair and I'm up running the bases now. So he's playing baseball on the other side. So is that for me to show the mother? Is it really a baseball field? I don't know, Sandra, but I can only go by the things that I hear. I had another grandmother say to me, just tell, tell my granddaughter um, that she, I'm in my favorite chair on the porch. And, she, and that's exactly what she loved doing, is sitting in this wicker rocker on her front porch overlooking her garden. So is it, are they doing things on the other side? Are there places? I believe so. And Brian Weiss, um, because I'm, I'm so blessed to be an author, I get to meet these people. Uh, Brian Weiss, many lives, many masters. Every time he would do a group regression, I would, I would just fall asleep. Or, and I said, Brian, why does this happen? Because I'm a somnambulist. I went deep. He said, the only way, he said, the best thing to do is if you had a past life regression yourself personally. So who did it? Brian himself. So how cool is that? Very. He took me to, you know, he took me to that. I was into that in between. I had a few past life experience, but I was in that in between place, not there, not here, like there in the middle. And I saw my, I, uh, I felt my guides heard them. Uh, I saw meadows and you're going to hear this a lot. I know you, you and a lot of people heard this. The other side cannot be described because there's no words to describe it. It's right. the strangest way to say this. Everything is all energy, the colors, the, the, the flowers. It's just really, really different. But I was there, and that's what I saw. So I believe that we do do other things. And what, another one, really quickly, I had a, a son come through, tell my mom that I'm now teaching kids. Well, just before he passed away, he was about to graduate college with a, with a, uh, a bachelor's in teaching. So he does still go on to do what he wanted to do in this life, teaching kids on the other side. You see, so it's really, 
it's, I don't know if we'll ever, you know what, Sandra, this is what's going to happen. We'll know when we go there, you know? I know but I, know. I can, I can only give the best evidence possible. I, have, I can't, I, I, have a yeah, story. I can only give the best evidence. I have a story for Love you. Love to hear it. And, and for listeners, um, before my dad passed away, he had, well, first of all, he had cancer 30 years prior and he didn't die. And he's one of those miracles that survived. He did all the mind over matter and the meditation and worked with Dr. Bernie Siegel and, and all those kind of things. So he yes. spent 30 years really trying to help people live. But he used to always say, you, you know, you got to fight this illness. You don't get to bring your toys with you. Da, 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 da. So I was secretly studying, is there ev any evidence of the afterlife? Just based on my own fears of dying. You know, sure. I never told anybody. Dad was very religious, uh, spoke about Jesus more than any buddy else on the planet and went to church at Catholic school, Catholic church every day. And he, he ended up passing away from cancer. And towards the end, I, I just knew in my heart, I had to tell my dad about my, my secret study of the afterlife. And, um, and so with really big eyes, he's looking at me like a little bit freaked out, but also a little bit interested. And then John, it came out of nowhere. I'm seeing a yellow airplane with black lettering, a tail dragger, as they called it. Dad was a pilot. And I said, Dad, I don't know why I'm seeing this, but I'm seeing this airplane and da-da-da-da-da. I'm feeling that a man is here and he's laughing and telling me to tell you that you were wrong, that he did get to bring his toys with him. And John, in that moment, my dad started to cry. He said his friend Jim had passed. Jim was a pilot. He had the yellow airplane with the black lettering. And he had had cancer. And dad said, I was always trying to help him say, you got to fight this. You can beat it because you can't bring your toys with you. It's with you. So dad then said, Sandra, tell me everything you know. And it was because of dad who said, Sandra, when I'm gone, promise me you write a book. And that's how this all started. And wow. um, so I do believe that it's a great place. Maybe earth is designed very similar to it, but they don't have all their, the answers of how to communicate. So if it takes using some of the uh, practices within your book, even setting a time mom today or tomorrow, we're going to, you know, yes. I'm going to quiet my mind and ask you to step forward and, you know, give that feedback. They don't have all the answers, but that you still have the relationship. It's funny you say that at the same time, because um, I teach my students, and this is how I was taught, is every Tuesday at 6 p.m., uh, this is in England, every Tuesday for two straight years, um, I would sit in a spirit circle with other uh, mediums, and you would, for an hour, and half an hour of just getting quiet, feeling like your loved ones come close, uh, what it feels like for spirit to come close, and there, there was a medium that would keep our eyes open and watch all of us, and then half an hour give off what we got, um, and it, through that practice is how um, I started, you know, really, you know, refining, um, you know, the ability. But um, I forgot where I was going with that, Sandra. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you and I are so funny. We were talking about uh, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Yes, every setting Tuesday. an appointment with yes, Spirit. Yes, every Tuesday. That's right. The schedule. You said setting a time. Yep. I beg your pardon. So every Tuesday, um, I was committed. And the organizer, I mean, it was in her home. She said, listen, be here at six o'clock. Spirit is going to be here at six. So you honor them because they're going to be here. And if you weren't there by six, they would lock the door um, and you couldn't get in because they didn't want you disturbing. So I was there and, you know, and I took the bus to get there. So I was there all the time. When you're doing this kind of work, I teach my students also, whether you're meditating, communicating with spirit, try to do it in the same room at the same time. What happens is the energy in the room or that space, if you don't have a full room, because the energy starts to build around it and around it, where it's, uh, it gets easier and easier to make that contact because you've already built up the energy um, in the room. And if you can't be there at the same time, at least try to do it in the same spot, um, you know, and it gets easier and easier to slip into that space because there is a, there is a feel to the room. Just like you said, when you can, when you meet someone or you walk into a room, that's clear sentient, you can feel it. So it is make a commitment, um, and set a time, make an appointment with spirit and they will never let you down. So you try to stay to the appointed time. So, you know, good on you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And I'd like to talk just a little bit about your thoughts on being human a bit, because it's so easy to be a skeptic. And it's so easy, even me for all this years of doing all this, 
I don't wake up in the morning remembering this. You know, I get the negative thoughts in my head. Sure. Do you think the, the world of negative thoughts or doubt or cynicism, skepticism and all that is just part of being human and it keeps us tied into the game of life? I mean, because it's, I don't even know if I'm asking a real question here, but no, I just understand. Your thoughts. No, and maybe we're can... physical beings and spiritual beings. And mm-hmm. a, a gentleman asked me once, "Why would I want to?" He says, "I'm, you know, we're in the physical world. Why? Why do I even want to uh, investigate or to understand or discover my spiritual side?" I said, "Because I said you're a physical being and a spiritual being. We're both. If you're too physical." Um, and not acknowledging your spiritual side, or if you're spiritual, Sandra, who, you know, for the people who take it way too far, they forget they're physical. Right. Everything is like, you know, the, it's like, you know, uh, woo-woo. Mm-hmm. You gotta, it's a 50-50 to honor only one side, to, whether it's physical or spiritual, you're only living a life half-lived. And, I, and I'm, I'm the same way. I make mistakes. I say stupid things. We have these thoughts. You're human. Just, just remember, if you, if you have a negative thought or if you snap at somebody or you say something too soon to somebody, um, you know, that's your ego, not your soul doing that. What are you going to do about it next time so you don't have that reaction? But it's, we're human. It's okay. I don't walk around levitating with my palms up, you know, with beams of light coming out of my hand. I'm a human. I'm just a guy. And a lot of people forget that I'm just a guy um, who has this ability, and they think that I know all the answers. I don't. It's 50-50. I'm doing the best that I can with the time that we have. Yeah, yeah. And, and it comes out of making the wrong decisions that we learn to make the right decisions. It comes out of the Absolutely. some of the most horrific uh, traumas and and rotten things that happen to our life, I think, that have us wake up and have our st- souls start to grow and start getting us on the spiritual path. Right. I would have never yep. been on this had my dad not died the way he did and the family start fighting the way we did and learn, learning about growth. And out of the worst thing that's ever happened to me, when I hit the deepest, darkest time of my life, came the absolute best thing that's ever happened to me, me being on this journey and now being able to share. Yep. And you know this too, like me with that accident. Um, I think I... It, it, that accident actually saved my life because, like I said, I was a young man living in a crazy L.A., you know, Los Angeles, being from New England, you know. Uh, it was a crazy life living out there. But um, some of your most um, situations you may think of the worst times in your life or the people in your life with the worst negative relationship, they can be the biggest. I learned this from a colleague of mine, too. It's a, it can be a situation like that that you learn the most from. Uh, or a negative situation can be the biggest spiritualist catalyst for you. Because if everything's good, you, you, you're learning. I understand that. But it's those hard lessons, the hard things that happen to you. That's when you really shift if you do something about it. Mm-hmm. If, if something happens to you, yes, you can complain that my parents were like this, my parents were like this. And, but, but what are you going to do about it now? Do you see? So don't let life, uh, don't complain that this is what life did to me. What are you going to do about it? You know, we, we have free will here. Yeah. Neil Donald Walsh has a great Love quote. Him. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's something to do with your dreams fulfilled or outside of your comfort zone. I, yeah, I bashed whatever the quote is, but it really is. It takes courage. Uh, the fear can arise, but it, it's like you got to cross that barrier. you got to take right. action and it may not be comfortable, but there's right. great stuff there. Uh, yep. J- John, can you talk a little bit about our soul and, and what that is? And of course, I know you're speaking at the Soul Summit coming up, but just who are we as soul beings? And, and you know, is there a plan for our soul? I I always ask my, when I just taught a, a workshop called Magic of the Soul, and it's based on my book, po- uh, Power of the Soul, Inside Wisdom for an Outside World, uh, which I wrote in 2007. And, and if you notice that everything is soul, soul, soul now, right. that's what that word is really, really big. Um, and I always say to my students or the audience, what is the soul? You hear soul food, that person has soul. Look at them dancing, their soul is beaming. What is the soul? What is the soul? And, and for this conversation, soul and spirit, same thing. Um, in the book, I break it down differently. But for right now, same thing. The, I say to people, what, it, what does it mean to you? And you hear all kinds of answers. But it's really, it's our essence. It's who you really are. You are a soul that comes with a body not a body that comes with a soul. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm a body and I have a soul with me. No, you're a soul first that has a body. You were a soul long before you incarnated into this world. You're going to be a soul long 
after you leave this world. Um, you know, the, and the soul, the other side, that's, that's our real home. So it's the essence. And your soul tries to get your attention all the time th- through different ways. It tries and tries. Dreams, intuition, synchronistic events, and wake-up calls. Those are the four top ones that I write about. My wake-up call, I mean, your soul's like, okay, let's give him this dream, see if it puts him on the path. And I didn't listen to that intuition. Give him that little nudge. Nope. Okay, we'll put these people in situations in front of him. Didn't listen to it. And then finally, wake up calls. My wake up call was that accident. And I don't, and I believe that we don't get too many of them. That's an opportunity. Now, I'm not saying that my soul made me have that accident or maybe it was planned. I don't know, but it put me on the path of where I was going to, where I was going. And by me accepting that accident and say, okay, my life has got to change. Um, I met my soul halfway. In other words, my physical self met my soul and I did a lot, I did a lot of work. So the soul is, is who you really are. And some people say to me too, Sandra, what's my purpose, John? I, I'm so confused. What's my purpose? No, our, we get confused. The perp, our purpose is not to be a, a host like you, a radio host or an author or me, a medium or, um, um, a mom just to be a mom or the president to just to be a president or a, of a company or something. Your sole purpose for here is to be all that you can be, a divine being from God or the source using your gifts, talents, and abilities to help others. So that's what I say. It's um, my, my ability of mediumship. Uh, me as a medium, is, I, my purpose wasn't to be a medium. It's to use that ability of mediumship to help others. Um, in any way that I can. So basically, I think that's it. It's your essence. It's your soul. It's basically your essence. But we don't listen to it a lot, uh, Sandra. We forget that we even have one. Like I said, technology is pulling us away from our soul. It'll always be there, but we're so programmed now to be in the outside world mm-hmm. and seek all the answers on our outside, whether it's the, uh, the world around us or technology. So go in once in a while. Have a soul check once in a while. And if you're ever saying to yourself, for you, for anyone who's listening, for all the people who are listening, if you keep saying, I really want to take that class, or like me, I would drive by the SPCA, the Society of Prevention of the Cruelty to Animals, for weeks and weeks, I kept saying, maybe I should go in there and ask them, can I help raise money? Maybe I should go in there. Well, I finally did. I had my own animal charity that raised $135,000 nice. for animals that need certain uh, operations for the New Hampshire SBCA. That's your soul. Anytime you keep saying, I can't keep living this way, what's wrong with me, I really should. If it keeps coming back to you, those statements, that's your soul's way of saying, You've got to check in with me. And that's when you have to learn to, to meditate a little. Help me. So show me the synchronistic events. So there was a little, you know, there's a little work working with your soul. It took us years to not listen to it. It just takes a little more time now to, to understand how it works and its promptings. <laughs> it's pretty cool stuff. I know you're speaking at the Soul Summit in um, Scottsdale. Uh, in Scottsdale. And I had the, the great honor of talking to Howard Martin about heart math. Math, yeah. And what I've always, well, back in the day, I used to believe I was a human being with a soul, and there was this kind of little yeah. dot in the center of my chest, and that was yep. the soul. But yep. in, this is now, this is my own belief. I don't push this on anybody else, but I have done so much with uh, dowsing rods and kinesiology and energy and da 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 da. And so to hear Howard Martin talk about that they can actually measure the electromagnetic energy field that emanates from the heart and that the better uh, the thoughts of appreciation and gratitude and love, how much that changes and how far it reaches and all this. I actually think, yes, we're a soul with a body, but I think, you know, our soul is much bigger than we are. I mean, oh, God, yeah, th- that's what I believe. And just putting all this together, I think, you know, we're just, you know, like us, this little body is just one part of it, but to listen and to pay attention to these synchronicities and these little passions that you've had, and they can change throughout your life. I don't think there's one thing we're meant to do, but when you said help others, I, if I, you know, in my invisible writing I'm doing right now, help others, underline, 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 underline. It really is about using who we are and making a difference for others. And we tap into that for ourselves. Absolutely. One person said to me too, um, 
I'm just one person. What can I do? And I said, are you kidding me? One kind act. I say this at the end of my radio show every week. One kind act can create a ripple effect that reaches farther than you could ever imagine. Mm-hmm. And that's simply, that's your soul saying to do this. Don't, don't do it because uh, you want something back. The universe will take care of you in, in its own way. But you could be, I do this sometimes. I go through tolls, even though I have that piece of equipment that I can just buzz through the toll. But mm-hmm. every once in a while, um, if I'm drawn to, I will go where people have to throw the coins and I'll reach into my car and, and I'll take out the money and I'll say, um, and she'll see that I can get through. And I'll say, this is for the person behind me. Tell them right. to have a good day. Maybe they were having such a bad day or they were hurt by someone or they didn't believe in people and, and they go through that toll. And then they, and maybe that'll change that person's mind, at least for that moment. And then they go on and it makes them have a better day. You never know what one kind act is going to do for, um, do for you. You don't know the ripple effect and you may never know. But trust me, kindness and love, it ripples through the world. It ripples through the universe. And when that gentleman says, well, I'm just one man, what can I do? Imagine if all of us did something like that, mm-hmm. or, you know, I believe in the power of numbers. So yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. There's a movie called pay it forward that came out many yes, years ago. That little kid. Remember? Uh, yeah, it was great. And I have interviewed a ton of people, John, that have had near death experiences. And when they talk about the, the life review, it is, going through life, seeing the difference you made with other people, a lot of it first, the negative, you actually get to feel any pain or sorrow or whatever. However, after that, you get to see the ripple effect of the good that you've done. And that amazes me. And, And that helps me live now that it's easy for me to compliment someone I don't know, or if they've got a great smile, I tell them, you never know the difference. My mom and I had lunch yesterday at a restaurant and the waitress was phenomenal. So we got her laughing and said really great things just genuinely. And she just said, you made my day. Who knows what her life has been like and what her day had been, but it's those kind of things. You don't have to write a book. You don't have to be a That's right. A host. That's right. But speaking about being a host for nine years, you've been on A House Radio. And can you talk a little bit about your show? Sure. Um, actually, I've been on the show for 13. I've had that show 13. for 13 oh, years. That's a long 13, time. That's a long time. And I remember being one of the, I, I'm still in the same time slot, Mondays at 3 p.m. on the East Coast and 12 p.m. on the West. It's called Spirit Connections. It's where I do readings for people, um, you know, for free. They can call in. Um, I bring on guests and I try to push the consciousness. I try to push your consciousness and to show you that we're spiritual beings with unlimited potential. That's why I love having guests of all different topics um, from uh, like yesterday, I had an energy healer on. I may have um, an astrologer or Brian Weiss on sometimes right. or from all different fields in, 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 and, and to introduce new mediums. Um, also into the into the field, so I, I love doing it. And it's uh, a lot of people are like, "What station is on?" It's HayHouseRadio.com, just like you. It's internet radio, and I'm blessed. And you know what I mean, Sandra. We're reaching a lot of people in a big way. And it's a lot of people that are sitting home, and nobody in their life buys into this. And I think right. everybody, in, and that's why to get together at one of your workshops or a conference, uh, it. It is so great to be sitting next to a person one on one, and it's just like, oh my god, th- this is real. This is this is true. Yes, and and a lot, and I know the conference uh, you're talking about the soul. I soul mean, summit. Uh, soul summit. Yep. Yes, I'm doing a. Uh, Suzanne asked um, asked me to do a. Um, an open to the public mediumship demonstration on a Thursday Mm -hmm. and it's open to the public. Um, You could take day passes or go for the whole thing, 12 to the 15th and and get to meet George Norrie from coast to coast radio for the first time. I've been on his show many times, so that's going to be thrilled and all the other speakers there. Um, But it's, um, it's, uh, I I am looking forward to that. So, um, you know, thank you for mentioning that. Oh yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, I would be there except for my day job has me working that I can't be there this year, but I'm sure I will be in future years as well. But the the Soul Summit Scottsdale is uh, host, it is, um, what's the word, sponsored by the Afterlife 
Research and Education Mr. Institute, AREI, yeah. which put together yeah. the Afterlife Symposium. So many, many people have been to the Afterlife Symposium for the past couple of years. And so this, although it's a different event, there is a lot on the afterlife, but there's also a lot on living life and sure. really tapping into your soul. So I can't recommend it enough. Soul and you're going to meet someone there, just like you said. Yes. Too. We all need someone to talk to. And a lot of people, um, it's great. I mean, I love online stuff too, but to be in the audience with the speaker, with other people besides, it's a whole nother energy. And some people may be nervous. They've never traveled by themselves here. You're going to meet friends there because it's like-minded people. This is your, this can be your soul tribe. And I've seen, I've done, I've been touring for 17 years and I see people walk out with friends for the rest of their life. I've seen people get married Mm -hmm. that met at these events too. And you know, you got to trust your gut too. synchronicity. If you keep feeling, God, I want to go to this. Maybe I should. I, maybe I can't. That's your soul saying, please. You know, so I am looking forward to it too. And I'm just, uh, I'm honored that I'll be one of the keynote speakers there. Yeah, I'm, I'm gra- grateful you're going to be there too. SoulSummitScottsdale.org. And you and I are bound to meet up because I live in Massachusetts, just south of the New Hampshire border. So it's going to happen <laughs> somewhere, somehow. You mean we haven't crossed paths? I'm only up near Portsmouth, and you're in northern – Yeah, you're in, by, uh, New- by Newburyport. Oh, girl, please. I know, okay. I know. You're well, right. we'll continue this when we're not recording, but it's going to yeah. happen. It's got to happen. And let's face it, this is a synchronicity. But what else That's did I right. want to talk about? Uh, technology, just briefly, as much as we can – say sometimes we're not in the moment, we're not paying attention, we're, you know, too busy on our phones. So I found out that you have these Oracle cards that you can download. And this morning, I (laughs) pulled a random card. And it was so funny, John, because in my life, uh, there's a lot I want to do with the whole we don't die world. But I also have to respect my day job. My mom and I own a catering business and we travel around the country cooking for race car teams. And I always think by now I should be somewhere else and I should be doing something and da 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 da. So the card that I pulled, um, I don't remember what the title of it was, but right in it, it said, have faith in divine timing and know that everything changes for a reason. This card acts as a reminder that it's a perfect time to reevaluate right. and search within your heart and soul for new insights. It was just like, it really is all about the perfect timing. So um, we can use technology for good. We can use it to remind us of who we are and really use it for our intuition. So um, I say, go to johnholland.com, find out about all, about all your good stuff. But I, yeah, they I love see, technology. My, my site too, they can find the uh, Soul Summit in Scottsdale, this, uh, September 12th. It's right on mine too, if they yep. need to go look there. Absolutely. And then also you're going to be in Methuen, Massachusetts in October, uh, Portland, Maine, October 20th. I looked at all these things, November 8th through 10th, Awakening Your Soul, uh, Your Natural Intuitive Abilities, Virginia Be- Beach. You got a couple events in November. So um, you got lots going on, John. So we have just a few minutes left. Any final words of motivation or inspiration or well, whatever? Uh, I, I say to if a lot of people, they put their phone beside them when they go to bed. And I understand that it could be the alarm. Um, but if you're, you're just really quickly, you, you wake up, you just left that you were in that beautiful sleep state before you reach for the technology. Yes. Okay. Shut the alarm off. If that's what you, you know, that's how, if you use your phone for that, but put your hand on your heart in the middle of your chest and just, it, just have one word to set the tone for the day, whether it's peace, healing, love, prosperity, uh, a positive word. Um, and before you look at Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. um, Instagram, um, Snapchat, uh, emails, because you're leaving that beautiful place that you just were, your spirit was on the other side rejuvenating, just like your body is in the physical, and you go immediately into technology, all right? Before, put your hand on your heart and say, I am soul, S-O-U-L, I am soul, and set that word. So my thing that I, I came up with, um, Sandra, is instead of reading, first thing in the morning, instead of reaching for your outer technology, reach for your inner technology. Yeah, start Beautiful. that. Start your day off that way. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, you're great, and I'm so grateful that all these many years later this has come about because I knew in the very beginning when I first heard you speak. And oh, here's something kind of cute. It was my first afterlife uh, conference, really, that I had the guts to raise my hand and ask a question. And I don't remember what the question was, but 
you were the one I asked, you know? And oh. so I was like, I got to be courageous, but I want to know this answer. So here we are right. today. And, and, and really quickly, if you're in Newburyport, I mean, I'm always uh, like in August. Um, I am at the uh, Unity Church, um, and that's on my site. So please come to one of my events. Just I call me to. now that you know how to track me down I and sure I, do. I know how to find you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, John, Good. thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for being our guest today. Oh, Sandra, thank you so much. Oh, and for our listener, uh, just a reminder, you go to johnholland.com to find out all where he is, what he's doing, all about everything, because he's got so much really good information. He's even got a great YouTube um, page that there's all kinds of videos you can see. You can join John at the Soul Summit Scottsdale, September 12th through 15th. You can visit soulsummitscottsdale.org to find out more or on his site. There's so many other events that he's at. If you want to see me, which I know you do, you keep an eye on live events on we don't die radio.com. In fact, I'll be speaking. I've got my own small workshop with, um, Carrie and Phil, Scott Milligan, Sonia Rinaldi, um, and some other great people. It's called the We Don't Die Discovery Course that you can get deep into some things that we talk about on this show. And I'll also be one of the speakers at the International Association of Near Death Studies, IANS conference, and their international conference near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, August 29th through September 1st. So you can go to wedontdieradio.com, click on live events to find out more. Also on that site, wedontdieradio.com, you can join the Insiders Club. That is my mailing list, which I don't send you lots of mail, I promise. But you do get a free copy of my book, We Don't Die, as well as a very healing audio that I created after my dad died called How to Survive Grief. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and you can hear it in my voice that I am so happy to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul, that we do get to bring our toys with us, that your life is important. We're here to learn. We are here to serve. So look at those little nudges that you've had and things you want to explore, things you want to do, things you know that you're good at. And, um, and yeah, find a way to share them with others to brighten others' days. So I want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.